What's up guys, welcome back to All Wings Everything. Yes, you are back in my kitchen with your boy Spinelli. Yes, for another easy and simple recipe. Yes, I am the wing king, just so you know. But today I got something different for you guys. Now, I'm gonna show you guys how to make Dominican fried fish. Yes, now, if you ever been to Dominican Republic or you have any Dominican friends, Ask them about this fried fish. I'm telling you, it is amazing. As you guys know, I'm currently in the DR and I'm loving eating this fish often because I don't have to cook it myself. I can just go to a restaurant and it's there on the menu. So I hope you're in your kitchen. I'm already in mine, so let's go. All right, so here are the ingredients we're gonna use for today's recipe. Let me tell you what we have. We're gonna use some adobo all-purpose seasoning. Uh, we got some garlic paste here. Now, if you don't have garlic paste, you can use minced garlic, but it's really recommended to use this because of the way we're gonna season this fish. So we got onion powder, some black pepper, some salt, ground oregano, same thing with this ground oregano. If you don't have ground oregano, you can use dry oregano leaves. But the way we're seasoning this, you want to use ground oregano. We're gonna use three limes and the star to show our red snapper. So these are the ingredients, guys. So let's go ahead and move on. Okay, so we've measured out our ingredients. Let me tell you what we have here. I have a teaspoon and a half of that ground oregano. I have two tablespoons of the garlic paste. I have two tablespoons of the adobo seasoning, a teaspoon and a half of pepper, a teaspoon and a half of salt, and a teaspoon and a half of onion powder. And I have my three limes. I just cut them in half because all we're going to do with this is just squeeze it over our fish. So these are the ingredients, guys. Let's go ahead and continue. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is this thing is pretty big, so I know it's not going to fit in my fryer or in my pan the way I want it. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just going to cut the tail end off right here. And... Hopefully it fits like that. So this is what we have. Let me see if this is gonna fit and I'll be right back. All right, so that does fit. So the next thing we're gonna do um, is we're just gonna start cutting some slits in it. And what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you cut until you, you spill the bone and then just lift up and go to the next one. I usually do them about, maybe about a half an inch apart. I like to put a few slits in mine because I like to make sure that seasoning is you know all over the fish you like you know in each one of these sections we're going to season inside so i like for them to be pretty close together and just gonna do it like that see that side looks guys and so what we're going to do now is we're going to flip it over and we're going to do the same thing turn them that way and guys i already had him cleaned up so I had the, the butcher clean this bad baby up already so we don't have to worry about any of that. All right, so this is what we have guys. So let's go ahead and move on. All right, so as you can see, look how we got those slits in there like that. Oh man, see, and this is where we're gonna have that. Um, and we also have that, you know, we got them cleaned on the inside too. So let's go ahead and move on. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're just going to combine our dry ingredients for our rubs. So I'll add our oregano, our onion powder, salt, our adobo seasoning, and our pepper. And all we're gonna do, guys, is just go ahead and get that whipped up. All right. Let's move on. All right, so what I've done is I put our red snapper into a Tupperware pan because we're going to um, season it in this because we're going to uh, let it marinate uh, overnight. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take our lime and I'm just going to squeeze our lime all over our red snapper. And you want to make sure you get it all into these crevices because this is what a flavor is. And what I like to do also is I like to open that bad baby up and put a little bit inside here too. 
And guys, I like to use a lot of limes, so you know I'm gonna use about three limes, the juice of three limes, because you know I just like that lime flavor, especially when it comes to this particular um, fried fish recipe. It's just really, really delicious. All right, so what we're gonna do next is that we're gonna take our garlic paste, and you can just use your hands when you're doing this. And what you want to do is you just want to, you want to lather that bad baby up like this. You want to get him lathered up in this garlic paste. Guys, this is not a recipe where you try to keep yourself clean. Get them hands dirty. Because this, this you want this bad baby to be um, seasoned to perfection. You don't have time to be playing with your hands. Get in those crevices. And if you need a little bit more garlic paste, Add you a little bit more garlic paste. Make sure it's good on the inside. And what we do is we flip that bad baby over and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna get him lathered up on this side. I typically don't mess with the head too much because I'm not gonna eat the head. I'm, I'm not that, I'm still an American man. I don't do all that. I know a lot of people from the Caribbean, they do that, I ain't eating the head. You know, I'm getting them right here from that, from that part on down. That's it for me, brothers. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our um, dry seasoning, this mixture, and we're just going to start sprinkling it over the top. Now, you don't have to use all this seasoning. I know you created it, it created a lot, but you don't have to use it all, but you wanna make sure he's well seasoned. But I like to get it rubbed on the inside, all on the inside, and I'm gonna flip this bad baby over. I'm gonna do the same thing. Get them all seasoned. I just like to move it around in here like that. And guys, what you're gonna do throughout this the marinating process, you're gonna continue to come in and you're gonna flip them over, put more of that juice on them, make sure it gets in there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cover this up. We're gonna put it in the refrigerator and I'm gonna marinate this overnight and then we're gonna cook this bad baby tomorrow. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, guys, so we are 24 hours into our marinating of our fish. So take a look at our snapper here. Take a look at that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start preheating. Well, not preheating, but warming up our oil. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove this bad baby from here. And I'm just going to drop him right here on the board. Let him sit there. And... Guys, look at this. This bad baby is seasoned to perfection. All right. All right, guys. So what I'm going to do now, we're going to go ahead and prepare our flour. So right here, I have about a cup of flour. And what I'm going to add to this cup of flour is I'm going to add two teaspoons of this adobo seasoning, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of onion powder, and I'm going to add a teaspoon of black pepper. And I can't forget about a teaspoon of paprika, smoked paprika. Now guys, you can season your flour the way you see fit. However, this is how I'm gonna season my flour and I'm gonna give it a good whisk like this, just to make sure we get it all mixed together. Oh man, this is what we have. All right guys, so our oil is almost heated up, so we're gonna get our fish over in this flour so we can go ahead and drop it in this hot oil. All right, so let's get this bad baby in here and all floured up. You know, flip them over as many times as you have to to get that flour all in there. All right, so it's time to drop this bad baby in here. You guys, we wanna lightly drop them in here because we don't want it to splash on us just like that and if he doesn't fit kind of push them down in there to get him to fit and guys i'm gonna let this cook pretty much for maybe three three to five minutes but we're going to take a look at it we want to make sure that that um that crust that skin is nice and crispy all right and I like for it to sit in here for 30 seconds to a minute so we can get that nice crust, uh, thin layer of crust on it before I start moving it around. 
And I like to move my meat around when I'm frying in a, in a pan because there's a real hot spot in the center. And then typically it gets more dark around here in the center piece than um, the rest of the, the, the meat, especially when you have, you have a piece of meat this long. So that's why I continue to kind of move it around because I don't want the, the center of it. I want it to all have the same nice golden color. That's what we're looking for. So I went ahead and flipped it around, guys, as you can see what I was talking about when it has that it's a little dark around the edges right there. But that's we're not going to worry about that. That's not going to do anything. That's why I like to move it around because what has happened is it's sitting right at the bottom of that pan. That's why I really like deep frying mostly because your meat doesn't have to touch the bottom of that pan. All right, guys, so it looks like we're about, about four minutes in. I'm probably going to leave it in here for about another minute. And then we're going to go ahead and pull this bad baby out. I'm gonna get it flipped over one more time. Look at that. Oh man. All right guys, it's time to pull him out. So we're gonna turn that off and we're gonna get this bad baby on a cutting board. Man, take a look at that. And we wanna be gentle with him. All right, so let me get this on a cutting board and I'll be right back. And guys, take a look at that bad baby there. Oh my goodness. All right, so what we're gonna do, kind of zoom in on a little bit. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put this on the plate, get into some quality control, so I'll be right back. And there you have it, guys. Dominican style fried fish. Guys, take a look at this right here, man. Look at that piece of art. Let me take it off this spinner so I can bring it up close so you guys can see what we're dealing with. Look at that. Perfectly fried, beautiful uh, golden color. Guys, this is what you're looking for. So the measurements and ingredients are all in the video description below, guys. So go ahead, check it out. The links to these items are in the video description below. Also, appreciate you guys for purchasing that All Wings Everything merch and also hitting that applaud button, showing me that you care about these recipes and you care about your boy Spinelli. So hit that applaud button. And guys, let's go ahead and get into some quality control because I am hungry. I waited one whole day for this fish to get ready and I'm ready to eat. I don't waste no more time, let's go. All right guys, so it's quality control time and you already know my favorite part of the video and I'm ready to try out our Dominican red snapper. So take a look at that, man. Look at that, guys. Ooh. Guys, if you hear some noise, I got the door open. But never mind. This is too important right here. This is way too important. So let's go ahead and let's get a piece of this thing. I just want to let you see this. Look at that. Oh, man. Ooh, wee. Mm-hmm. Just what I expected. Mm. Man, this thing is seasoned to perfection. Well, if you ever come to Dominican Republic and they have this, this city called Boca Chica, where they make this, where they specialize in this type of fish, they call it Boca Chica fried, fried fish. I'm telling you, man, it is delicious. People come from all over the country just to go to Boca Chica to get some of this fried fish. Guys, and this is delicious. So if you're ever in the country, make sure you ask for the Boca Chica fried fish. And until then, I'm your cook, Spinelli. All wings, everything. And I am out. Peace.